Good morning, welcome to the video. It is Monday the 23rd of September and it's raining. I mean I've just nipped out the van to make this video but it's not raining that hard but it's been raining really hard and uh, I assume it's going to rain it all day. What I was doing is I'm just up at the sports club where I uh, did all the renovation to that those pitches or the goal mouths. So obviously it was the wrong time of year to do it but doing it is better than not doing it. Uh, so I'll just show you one of the goal mouths now. I think this is a nine aside pitch. So what's quite interesting is looking at it is there's less wear on this because I suppose the goalkeeper uses more of the goal as he's older. But what you can see as you look around, you can just see there's a lush green bit there. There's a couple of lush green bits there and down there. So they're all the bits that we seeded. Obviously the kids goal mouths are, you know, they take much more of a hammering because the goalkeeper really does stick to their sticks to his spot. But they've been played on, they've been trained on. Um, you can see all the grass that's come through, um, and obviously that gold mouse you know, it's, it is what it is. It's going to get hammered. But one of the points for why I said, look, let's do the work rather than not do it, is to level it out because some of those were serious ruts that you know were ankle twisters. If and I said, look, if even if we don't put any seed down, let's just level them out a little bit. Uh, from a health and safety point of view, so uh, so that's what's happened, and um, yeah, I think it's certainly improved the pitch. Uh, unfortunately, um, they don't want the weeds dealt with. They're concerned that if the weeds get dealt with, there won't be anything left. But you've got to start somewhere. So uh, this is going to be postponed until after the season. Um, and again, there's another goal mouth. You can see the area we did. Um, again, the old mouth has been hammered, but it always would have been. And then, uh, and then again over here, this this pitch was probably the worst pitch. So we'll just see here, and there was the goal mouth over there. So yeah, other than the real isolated bit where the goalkeeper stands, you can see the area that's coming quite nicely classic case of it is what it is it should have been done in april um but they're leveled if nothing else so yeah so today should have been a whole day of scarifying and seeding top dressing etc etc but it's too wet to be scarifying i'm just going to make a bloody mess so um we shall see i've just been to rigby taylor just got a load of fertilizer a load of seed so i need to get that into the container okay so what we've got is rigby taylor or origin so rather than the bluegrass seed bags, they're now green uh, fertilizer bags. So they had a deal on in there. So this is some autumn green bio. So it's a 3126, 6% um, cal calcium, 2% magnesium and 8% iron. So great for the autumn. They've got rid of their usual pre-seed fertilizer and uh, they've got some fancy one now which has got all these added ingredients and everything but to be honest if you're just slapping it under turf it doesn't really matter. Um, so they've got this pre-seed stuff, this new stuff, it's the cheaper stuff but it also comes in a 25 kilogram bag so you're getting a little bit more like literally you're getting a bit more um, five kilograms more in fact so uh, I'm gonna give that a go um, uh, and uh, I'm sure it'll do a very good job. So after being at the sports ground it then rained really hard again and it's just eased off a little bit so I'm just up the container. So one of the things I do need to do is if you remember last week on the Time Master the blades clattered each other and it has caused a little bit of damage. Nothing that I don't think can be uh, um, filed out if you like. So I'm just uh, put, put the belt guard back on the, uh, the older one uh, finally, so that's that sorted. That's going to be used now. Um, well, really, until I suppose it goes wrong, and then I can switch back to this one or do whatever. This is the newer one. Um, look at that mouldy older uh, grass under there. So that's from Wednesday, I think it was, and it's just obviously it broke down. So I just put it away. Should have scraped it out really, but you never know. That's the way it goes, isn't it? So anyway, I need to just take these blades off because they have clattered each other at some point. Um, and then uh, just trying to salvage the blades because I think they're okay. 
yeah so that's pretty much what i'm doing this afternoon and then also i've got to get all the fertilizer out of there ignore the golf clubs and uh get them stacked in here morning so it's tuesday now it's a bit drizzly it's a bit rubbish um it's a bit wet but uh the bit of drizzle that's coming in at the moment i, I believe is supposed to stop pretty soon and then um and then I don't think it's going to rain for the rest of the day. And it's going to be the best day of the week. So we're going to have to make the most of it. Um, so today is a usual fortnightly Tuesday. Uh, there's a few differences this week though. So uh, if you remember two weeks ago I said one of my clients had sadly passed away. Um, they or th that person's having the fun their funeral next, next Tuesday. So the family who've asked me to stay on cutting the grass, etc. Um, they just made me aware of that and said, look, you know, obviously we don't really want you a sort of mowing and blowing and stuff during the wake as such. So um, can we come up with an arrangement? So I gave offer, offered them a few options. One was because actually it's the week between the two cuts. One was uh, to do an extra cut on the Monday, so the day before. That also would give me a bit of time, um, should it should it be raining, to uh, to even go in on the morning of um, early and get the stuff done, um, or or just delay or postpone one of the cuts e either side if you like. Uh, sorry, delay or bring forwards the one afterwards. Uh, so you know what you're going to do. It's I'm, I'm happy to be totally flexible on this. Um, it's not ideal circumstances. Um, so they just said delay this week's cut and then go in on Monday and do it. Uh, so it doesn't affect me as such. Maybe just there'll be some more leaves down and a week's more growth. But you're looking at the bigger picture. So you just be as helpful as you possibly can. Uh, so that has clear, uh, created a gap in the diary, as it were. I was already doing a bit of extra work. So the client with the massive lawn, which is cut by a robot mower, they've got something on this weekend. So they've asked me if I could just go in and do the edging. So the plan was to go in and do the edging once I'd done all my uh, my Tuesday cuts. And if it just turned into a late afternoon, early evening job, it was what it was. It's just a one-off, it's a bit of extra money, and bearing in mind that I've already lost um, three and a half days, four days if you include uh, Ground Fest 2 bad weather, um, we'll take as much money as we can. Um, however, now we've got this gap that's actually made it a little bit easier, but also uh, one of the fortnightlies, um, it was just a tiny bit of hedging around the back that I just needed to do. So uh, we'll get that done too, but because we're not at the uh, because we're not going to one of those fortnightly cuts, that means I don't need the Time Master. So I've literally just need the 56 Pro and the Ego battery mower. Okay, so here we go. Here's one. This is the one, two, three, third job of the day. Um, <clears throat> on the way here, it started proper drizzling quite hard. Not quite raining but hard drizzle. Um, it seems to have stopped now, so I'm hoping that'll be it for the rest of the day. Um, that's due to the... Uh, that was another candidate that had it been dry today, then we could have looked to do some lawn care on there, but I can't even spray the weeds, because as I say, it's, it's rained for most of the time I've been here. So, uh, not ideal. Okay, so you remember this one from the start. This was a new one for this year. Uh, there was part half turfed, half seeded. You may remember this one. It's been in a couple of the videos. So this is this gets mown by a um, a. It's not actually. I don't know where it is, but the uh, the Husqvarna uh, robot mower. Apart from that bit, and that bit over there, they've decided to let go. But essentially, what my job is. Oh, there he is. He's over there. Um, essentially my job today is to just get all this um, edged and uh, strimmed etc etc uh, so originally I got first got called in because this all got put in and before the wires could be were in place the grass really needed cutting and it kind of got out of hand and obviously the mower didn't know that these bed, beds existed so rather than mulching through they had to uh, turn it off 
um, and that's when I got called in and then did a reasonably good job I suppose and then uh, then during the summer because we've had a wet summer the grass it just grow too, grew too quickly and um, and yeah they asked me to come back in and to, to get it smashed down again which I did and you know they're pretty happy I mean as I say if you have a it's not bad for a large area and you've got to remember that there's another area the same size as this the other side of the house as well so they uh so yeah but there they've got a party at the weekend so they just want all the edging done so it's uh it's a couple of minutes from my house so i thought yeah perfect a good cup of coffee as well has been made by the uh, by the uh the lady of the house so uh can't complain right i'll show you what it's done once i've finished okay all finished <clears throat> so you always get that real sort of yellowy patch all the way around. But all done. Wednesday today, so we woke up to torrential rain. Um, it's actually turned out quite nice. A bit of blue sky, although the weather does suggest there's some rain coming. Um, so I'm doing my, my two main lawns that I do today. Um, and then I'm going to do just a, a tiny bit of lawn care just down the road. I, I feel it's too wet to scarify, uh, to do a decent job anyway, so we do a little bit of seeding, some isolated patches. Anyway, autumn is definitely here. So uh, we're going to get these leaves cleared up. Um, and also get this just tidied up and cut all over really. I'll show you the back, loads of leaves down. This is Friday's lawn, I'm just walking past the house. Um, while in the road. So if you remember on Friday we cut it down, scarified it and fed it. That's where we're at so a few days later. Not bad, huh? Okay, so here's the back and as expected it is raining again. Um, so that tree is seriously dropping its leaves. Uh, so what I've done is I've just blown them out onto the lawn and then uh, the, uh, the plan was to pick them up with the cup cadet. Um, if it rains too hard that might scupper those plans. But uh, actually it's eased off a little bit, but I was just about to jump in the shed and uh, get my waterproofs on because it's raining um, harder than I liked. That rain hasn't actually come to much. Uh, I'll just show you quickly what I've done over here. If you remember what that looks like, all those leaves have been cleared and cut as well actually. And then this section around here has all been cut and cleared. I'll show you the back now. Okay, so... This has all been collected and cut with the um, the Cub Cadet. So actually what I did do was I put it on a high setting and just side discharged and mulched up all the leaves. And then, uh, and then yeah, then just put the collector back on, dropped it down and, uh, and cut it all up nice. So, uh, so yeah, pretty good. It's too wet to scarify. Um, the ground's just, just not gonna be ideal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up the road to my first job on a Thursday and get that done. Then that's ticked off the list for this week. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a reasonable sized gap for tomorrow. It may mean that um, I might be able to do tomorrow's jobs and a Friday job um, and just play it by ear. But what it will do is, as I say, it will give me a sort of a three hour window of, uh, of tomorrow because it's also the furthest one away from my house as well. Um, furthest way and away from the, the lock up so it's just going to give me some options so anyway I'm going to crack on with that um, as it's not raining and what a lovely morning there we go we should enjoy these times so it has rained pretty heavy overnight and this morning too the sun's come out now however the weather report is saying that there's going to be weather warnings for the next 24 hours um, one of my apps is saying that from 11, we're going to have rain from 11 and then thunderstorms from 11 till about 4 or 5 this afternoon. So, uh, yesterday I got that extra job done, which was great. Uh, so that means that I've only got two that I need to do today. My two, the Thursday one. So I'd normally do three on a Thursday. However, the, the second one has... A lot of lawn care that I can do there so the plan was that if I had time I would cut here then cut there and then do the lawn care now 
it seems as though judging by the the time it's going to be um we're going to be going into thunderstorms when i plan to do the lawn care so we'll just have to play that one by ear uh we'll get it cut and then if we get the we can get one lawn done the front lawn maybe that's a smaller one uh we'll just we'll just see but for the moment i'm just going to crack on and uh yeah get this all done before as quickly as i can and then get moved on last week um I cleared a pathway for machinery to get in and out. I'm not sure if I showed it at the end, so I'll do it now and we'll see. And I'll try and add a bit in of what it did look like. So basically I took the roof off the pergola because the, uh, the dumper's gonna be coming in and uh, it's all stored and it can all go back on later on if that's what they choose to do. But basically, yeah, just make, cleared this pathway. So leaving as much as I can, but I opened it up just so stuff can get in and out and here comes the rain so uh, who knows what how long this will stay in for uh, hopefully it won't be all day um, but fortunately the job I have got to do later is sort of homewards direction so I guess I'll head home or towards the uh, or towards the lock up get some stuff sorted and just wait and see what the weather's doing but uh, yeah here we are lawn sort of all striped up that was just a nice little high cut because it's not been cut for a couple of weeks um mainly due to the bad, the bad weather and then obviously last week was a dry week but it was uh doing the or dry day but it was it was cutting all that stuff back so you can only do what you can do but um yeah very very tidy now i've just got a bag of moldy apples i need to get rid of and we're done here if i don't see you before i'll see you tomorrow friday So I just got home. I just finished that job. The interesting thing happened. The garden is a bit weird. Um, and while I was there, uh, there was a load of like ripped up bits of grass. And I said to the client, I said, oh, have you got a badger or something? Uh, just I could see it down the bottom of the garden. She was like, no, no. And then the gardener sort of came over and went, oh, yeah, that was my dog um, playing with some sticks. So it was a bit like. We both sort of looked at each other and was like, it's not really on, is it? You bring your own dog in to ruin the garden. Um, I think she had a word with her about that. And then, um, and then, uh, she then handed me some poo sacks. This is the gardener and expected, and said, here, come on, you can help me clear up the dog poo. I was like, I don't think I am. She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's only fair type thing. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, absolutely not. And then the client had to like step in and go, uh, no, he cuts the grass. He doesn't do things like that. Uh, so anyway, got done, started raining hard. I kind of sort of driven out of the rain. So I expect the rain sort of going to catch me up in a minute. Um, so I'm just going to take stock of what needs to go on. However, if you remember from a lot, I think it was last week's video. Yeah, it must have been last week's. The, uh, the spindle broke on the, uh, on the Toro Time Master. The, the part has arrived, so uh, we can get that fixed. So that'll be good. So if it is torrential rain, at least we can solve that problem. Right, well, I, well here comes the rain now. Here it comes, proof. So uh, yeah, uh, we should see what comes of this, but if nothing else, the Time Master's getting fixed. Okay, so we're just changing the spindle on the uh, Toro Time Master. So just thought I'd show you quickly how to do it. Should you uh, should you get stuck? So this one's quite an easy one actually. Um, it's this one in here, which is a bit of a problem because this is the tensioner, and you've kind of got to get underneath it. Uh, so it's actually easier to just take this off. So all you need to do is the the actual tensioner bit. Just unscrew that. So it's just a spanner on the locking nut, and then unscrew it basically and then this one's just bolted into the deck so that comes up then we lift this off obviously the first thing i did was remove the cover pretty simple really so uh so yeah um essentially that's what we do to begin with so i'll do that first i think it's uh 12 mil 12 mil nut 
get this off and then we can then get that bit off which is obviously <clears throat> that's where the spindle sat on top of there so we'll get that done okay so i have got this off now it is possible to, to slide a spanner underneath there just to hold that nut but i thought i'd take it off because it's, it's only two nuts really to show you exactly what it is and also get clean out in there so basically it's just unscrewing this nut here like this okay so when you open it up you get your spindle you get your your cap and then you get this sort of i don't know what you'd call it spacer nut thing here uh, so essentially what's going to happen here is this goes up So what we have to do is in reverse, kind of. Um, so first of all, that goes down. And of course, I'm doing this one-handedly. This sits on there like that. This then sits on there like that. This sits on there like that. And then you bolt. And so I've just got a little turn on that. That'll make everything open. I can't do it one handed, but essentially, there you go, something like that, and that holds it all together. What I will do is just put a bit of copper grease on there just to make it easier when it all comes back off. Okay, so all good and sitting lovely and spinning freely. So, what we're going to do is put the, the cap on again, can't do it one handed, but so. We'll do that in a minute, but yeah, that's it. All I'm going to do now is get the compressor, get this all blown out, and then um, and it, I did. It's actually three bolts because it's one in here, one here, and then you get the actual one which uh, sort of pushes it back and forth. Um, the tensioner, if you like. So here we go. It's all bolted in now, and it's sliding back and forth beautifully. All I need to do now is connect this bit on here just to get the tension right but you will notice there is a belt missing because nothing in this world is bloody simple so the belt broke basically while i was doing it um i don't know my own strength because i was just pushing it with one hand but there you go um so uh, fortunately i do have the spare belts but what it will mean is i now need to get the belts on and to do that um you have to get this belt off because it's got to go underneath this belt and the easiest thing to do there is to take these off uh, so that one's the easiest one to do because you can do that for a ratchet and then loosen that one and then you can just pull this out and then make all the make all the things you need to do so we'll do that in a second one top tip I'd say is to you need to take the brake off of this so by doing that, all you can see is on the handle, I've just engaged the blades and just tied it off with some tape there. That'll take the brake off. So it's a case of undoing this. Now, what you'll find is on both of these, where's the screwdriver? Um, getting that off meant that happened. But, so I should use a straight one for the minute. But so when you when you put the belt on, you need your you make sure your blades are in the right position so there's a hole here and there's a hole here and that hole will line up with something i think it's about there i need to get a... oh there you go perfect that means that the blades are in the right position or if the blades were on they'd be in the right position so they don't clash so when you put the belt on you need to just make sure that that's uh that's that's uh in the right place and the reason i've had to take this off is because the gap down the side of there is just too tight so I'll, uh, I'll quickly sling the, blade, the, uh, the belt on a second. Okay, so now the belt's all in place. You can take these out and you can spin these because these will spin at the same speed or the uh, at the same time. So that there's no chance of them clashing. So everything's back in together. So all we're going to do now is we need to tension this. But before I do that, I'm just going to put this all back together. So now, let me put the light back. Now everything's as it should be. Um, obviously I need to put the guard back on and the guard back on here. I just need to tension this. Um, and all we're going to do is tighten this in. And obviously spanner on this nut here, socket on here, and then tension it. And then you've got this little thing here. And if I just go above it, 
you just see that it's not flat there's a little bit of a kink in it and the idea is that you tension it as much as you can and have a single piece of paper which you can just about pull out and that's how you'll know that it's tight enough um, so uh, but I guess in and around there is, is roughly where it needs to be that, that just ensures that you don't over tighten it so my understanding of it is you have a piece of paper in it and you can pull it out without it ripping um, and I guess you do that until it rips and then you just backing it off slightly okay, so this is the the job from last week I showed you it midweek uh, this is it now um, you can see down here I have taken a photo uh, of these little areas that I seeded you can just see there is germination which is lovely this one didn't get cut last week because obviously it was torrential rain and thunder and lightning and, and everything else which came with it so it is a case of it's got to, I've had to sort of hack it down because next week if the weather's good we'll get a scarify on this we'll get a feed on this and I don't want it to have gone three weeks over without being cut otherwise it's just gonna we're gonna spend the, the limited time we'll get on it was I don't want to spend all that time trying to reduce the height so um, yeah we've got it cut a bit wet in the middle you can see there um, and a bit mossy as well and that is really just due to the uh, surface water because uh, obviously it's not shade it's it is the, um, the fact that it's awful awful soil um, and that bit of uh, moss that's there which has formed um, and this bit I've spoke about this this area before this is massively compacted. This used to be the car park for when the, when the house was built. And over the years I've aerated and it's made a hell of a difference, but it's still not quite there. So because it is completely compact, what that means is that the water slow, is slow to drain through. And, um, you know, obviously with the aerator, the garden aerators, you can only go down about that far in reality. And that's not far enough. Um, and I've spoken before about this garden that there's like a plate about a foot down and if you smash through it then uh, then the water drains away um, I've just looked over at the drain at the drive there and it's completely full the water table is uh, is at its highest currently there's nowhere for the water to drain away it's not blocked it's just the volume of water that we've had um, so yeah if we get a dry week next week I think towards the end of the week it's supposed to be then we'll get on here and uh, we'll get some lawn care in and we'll get it uh, looking good but it's you know considering it's it's not had any treatments yet it should have been scarified the plan was to scarify it uh two week no three weeks ago i think it was um but we got rained out and then um and then obviously we got rained out twice so we've missed we've missed two two weeks of because of the weather because on this one we've been rained out twice now so the in-between cut I'm always playing catch up just trying to hack it back down again uh, so I want to get it down and then next week we can then get on top of it get some of that thatch get some of that moss out um, and hopefully let the, the lawn breathe a little bit so we're just halfway through that one the problem with that one is needles the amount of needles that come out of that tree are ridiculous um, so you can spend half an hour clearing that up easily so yeah the back doesn't look too bad to be honest it's a bit long but and there are some leaves down obviously but uh it's not it's not crazy messy so it's now friday 4 30 uh back at the lock up now and it's it's not raining and there's a bit of blue sky um for the first certainly for the first two jobs of the day it rained just sort of light rain you know workable rain but um unfortunately uh, it's the end of the week now um, I've got half an hour to to get packed away and then go and pick the kids up from after school clubs uh, so so unfortunately I can't make the most of this this opportunity of no rain How, although saying that the lawns were wet really wet too wet to to think about scarifying and I was thinking about I was thinking how these videos these weekly videos I've been doing since the basically the start of the season and the whole theme of the start of it was how wet everything was. It's just, it's just been an awful year, hasn't it? 
So, um, yep, so I'm just back up at the container and I've just put the um, some blades back on. So this is the Time Master that I, I did all the belts on yesterday. I've just put the um, some actual blades back on because obviously I had to do some sharpening and some repair work on them. As you can see that it's really important that like I did yesterday when I put the screwdrivers in that you sync it all up properly to avoid the uh, the blades smashing into each other so as they go round they, ne they never clash and of course that was the problem um, is that they they got out of time and they did clash so that's it for another another week um, and it's just a battle against the weather isn't it anyway I hope you enjoyed uh, watching my struggles and um, I'll see you next week for uh, hopefully a drier week anyway like comment subscribe all that jazz and i'll see you in the next one